live at Luke Floriani for the OK Music Sessions. Today we're down at Apartment 58 and I've got a great friend of mine, Nate James here, uh, talking about his experience on The Voice. Oh and, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, take out the accent, leave the accent. I had to. Alone, uh... Yeah, I mean, being on TV show was more pressure. Um, a lot more exciting. I think that as far as concerts go, like I've done festivals in Japan and Italy for like 200,000 people, and I've done intimate cozy gigs at Jazz Cafe for like 500 people. So, in all honesty, I get more nervous about the intimate gigs because people are right in front of you, and it's like you're here and their face is there, or the festival is like, it's just a sea of bodies. Um, and everyone's clapping and having a great time, but you kind of get a bit lost in the atmosphere as opposed to, um, as opposed to seeing people's immediate reactions to you. Um, and in the, in the voice studios, there's maybe 700 people in the audience, so although you're being watched by 8, 9 million people at home, you only see those 600 in the room with you. So it's kind of like, they just say, don't think about who's watching, just think about who's there then. And I'm like, so what, Will I am, Tom Jones, Jesse J, Daniel Donahue, and 700 other people I don't even know. No pressure. So the cameras get pretty close. So yeah. as they're coming up to you, it's a bit like, don't worry about me, I'm just... I'm just yeah, I'm all up in your face right now. Yeah, like, right. Just try to ignore me. And don't look, in, don't look in me. <laughs> I was like, but you've got this big lens right there. Um, so yeah, you know what, it was, it was great. But again, that, what you were just saying, the whole banter with all the, with the crew and everyone, they're, they're a great bunch and it was, I was, everyone's made to feel very much at home and very calm. Well, why, what was the motivation for going on the show? Did in all honesty, the industry's changed so much. It's not about just being a singer-songwriter now. You have to have a platform, you have to have a story, you have to have an angle to launch your music now. Rather than being photographed falling out of a nightclub, it's the far, excuse my language, yes, do you know what I mean? Uh, it's like, well, I'm thinking, well, I'll go on a show that obviously is credible. That's good. What do you actually think of Jessie's song choice uh, that she picked for you guys? And, and do you think it was a, a fair song choice? Um, I mean, nowhere is a duet, obviously, but it was Jordan Sparks' song. Um, that, fe that featured Chris Brown, you know, so in that respect I was like, it is a girl song that's featuring a guy. Um, I mean, we brought it down a semitone for me because it was right up my range. I was like, I don't really want to actually have to shout and belt through this song, I want to sing it and actually put some soul into it and make it sound mine. Yeah. Um, so, and also, I mean, Lavelle, I said to her that morning of the battle, I said, to her, you do realise you like Jordan Sparks today? And then, then literally Jesse said, oh, you're singing Jordan Sparks. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, so that was kind of cool. But, you know, Jordan Sparks tweeted us in last night and said what a great performance it was and she loved it and, and what have you. So, um, I didn't think it was the right song choice for me. Um, but it's difficult when you do choose a song for a girl and a guy to find that happy medium that's going to suit both voices. And it just so happens this time to suit Lavelle's more than mine. So, you know. Um, what would you do differently? Get go, probably would have gone with Danny as a coach. Because um, both Danny and Jesse turn around. Um, I think that Danny's got a team more kind of in the realms of rock and indie as opposed to soul. So I think I would have probably stood out a lot more in the band and been a bit more of an individual vocalist as compared to Jesse's team, which had a whole across the board pop, soul, and, and whatever. Um, as far as the battle goes, I loved my suit, I loved my shirt, I loved my hair. Um, they did a great <laughs> job grooming me and styling me. Um, I just think maybe if we had a different song, it would have been a different story. Um, people have tweeted in and said, Nate, what's it like being backstage? What's it like before you go on stage? Is it exciting? Is it funny thing? 600 people, Will I Am, Jesse J, Dan, uh, Tom Jones. What's it like? Um, do you know what? The backstage room is actually, I, I just call it the pacing room because everyone is literally just like, just walking up and down and like literally there's just these four walls, there's a kettle, there's some snacks and stuff. You're like, don't drink too much, don't eat too much, you can be on camera in a minute, you can be singing, so don't get your belly full, you can be burping on the microphone, which I've done before, it's awful. Um, I think the most intense thing is walking up the stairs behind the set, because the set. you walk up about 12 steps and there's nothing worse than being on national TV and literally stacking at the top step. And everyone's saying to me... You can imagine that, you just go... Well, yeah, I mean, literally, like, everyone's tweeting me going, you look so nervous, I was like, because I was like this, as I came on, and I was like, there's still five steps. And it's a perspex stage, and I had shiny bottom shoes on as well. And I was like, if I drop hard on this, on this before I even sang a note, I mean, it's going to be TV gold, admittedly. It would be, it would be in the bloopers. Yeah. It would be the most replayed blooper of the season. You'll make um, YouTube hits, that'd be perfect. I know, seriously, right? Not for his music, the fact he's stacked on stage on The Voice, yeah. Um, but no, it's, you know, it's intense, but it's, it's a lot of fun. And so, I, I've had a blast. So, so to answer the question that, was, mm. that, was, uh, that I had tweeted to me, it's the thing that was going through your stage the most. Yeah, Before you came on stage, it was not, don't forget, the, right. don't forget the lyrics, right. don't sing the wrong notes, it was just don't fall over Just walk stage. in a straight line and walk downstairs. And you know what, walking downstairs but looking straight ahead of you is a very difficult thing to do. I, 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 I don't know what to say. I mean, you normally do look down, don't you? 
So you did. So like cameras like Nate just look straight on. Look at the microphone. Mate, you look so poised. You look. Oh, I was ready. I was ready. I was ready. Once I got to the microphone, I was fine. So like, right, that's that means I don't care if I chop up and come off stage now because I'm hoping to go through. So that's fine. Can you tell me what was it like working with Jesse James? Do you know what? It was great. Um, we didn't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time because I was just a very busy girl and there's a lot of people on the team. Uh, I mean, there was one day where we were all wearing the same outfit as the day before filming and she turned up in another outfit and was like, uh, did I miss this memo or something? And just, we just, just, just cracking up about it all day because we were like in the same clothes, having washed them obviously, we weren't trampy. Uh, and she was in a brand new outfit looking all fabulous and super stylish and I was like, Something's That's missing not here. Like, it's not, not right. right, yeah. <laughs> but other than that, do you know what? It was she was a delight to work with and it was just constant banter all the time. So yeah. Oh, excellent, good. excellent. Cheers. Okay, this has been Live with Luke Florian for uh, OK Magazine online music sessions. And again, thanks to the wonderful Nate James. Good to see Cheers, you, mate. mate. Great to see you. Good and to see uh, you. let's go down and have a scene. Let's do it. Okay. Cheers. Nothing to lose.